Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Would you look at these beauties? As you can see, I went a little crazy. You know why? Because it's easy to do, it's quick, and it's so much fun. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these pleated paper flowers. We are using strips of paper, off cuts, book pages, maps, packaging. You can use gift wrapping paper, baking paper, newspaper. You can use any paper you can get your hands on. The flimsier, the better. We'll get into that in a moment. After I show you how to make the flowers, I'm going to give you lots and lots of ideas on how you can actually use them in your projects. All right, let's begin. Okay, so we're starting off with some strips. You can use leftovers from your previous projects or you can cut them up yourself. Uh, this is a good way to use up some of those scrapbook papers that you don't particularly like. So there's that. Personally, I don't measure anything. So all of my strips are different sizes, but generally speaking, the wider the strips, the larger the flowers, and narrower the strips, the smaller the flowers. There are some potential problems that come up with this project, and I'm gonna speak about all of those problems. For example, the wider the strip, the quicker you run out. So you actually run out of paper before forming a full circle. But I think the best way to proceed is to just show you the technique. And then we can see all of the potential problems and they may happen on camera. So I'm starting with this strip. This strip is one and a half inches wide and it's 12 inches long. Don't bother yourself with that. You have a strip of paper. We're gonna be using some really short strips of paper in a moment too. So here we go. This is the technique. You have your strip of paper and now you're just folding and pleating the paper like this. And you're trying to create a circle. And let me tell you, it looks easier than it actually is because once you start doing it, all of these things start going wrong. Now, I think with this one, what's gonna happen is I'm going to run out of paper before I form the full circle. And that's okay because we can maneuver it to make that into a flower shape. That's the technique anyway. And then I kind of pierce a hole right there in the middle. And it just, I pin it down on this piece of styrofoam and it just kind of waits there for my next step. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. And I want to show you a thin strip and how easy it is to get that full circle like these ones here. And then you can even have extra. So you get layers like this one here. You can see it's a little bit layered. So here we go. And so we're folding, but we're folding on an angle rather than just straight folds. So angle, you're trying to create a circle, right? So you're kind of meeting everything, every fold here in the middle. This is really hard to explain. So the best thing to do is to just try and do it yourself. I mean, it took me a little while. I was looking for tutorials out there. Couldn't really find anything. And here we go, you can see I actually have created a full circle and I have a little bit of leftover. So you can, if you don't want your flowers to be too thick, you, you can, you know, choose to cut that bit off. And here we go. That's kind of like, you can set them aside until you're ready for the next step. You don't have to pin them down. They can just sit like this because once you grab it, you can just very easily, you know, put it back into that shape. But I like them all sitting here. Notice how they don't look perfect. They just don't look... They don't even look that great at all like especially this one that i just did you can see all these bits but that's the beauty of it because once you start putting them together and you ink the edges a little bit there's no cutting involved or anything like that they do look a lot better and especially when they're actually on projects which is another thing i'm going to show you in today's video how to actually use these and also another thing the thinner the paper also the easier it is much easier to fold So as I'm folding, I'm not actually folding them down completely until the flower is done. I'll show you what I mean. I'm only kind of keeping it here and I'm not doing this right away. I was doing that at the start and then I realized that it's actually easier to maneuver the flower if it's not already crisply folded down. So see here, I ran out and then when I tried to maneuver it, I've already made these folds and now I have to refold again and it's looking very messy. And just to reiterate the last point, you can see I'm folding, pleating, I should say, I'm, fold, I'm pleating the paper into the circle and I'm holding everything down here, but I'm not folding these bits down until I get to the end. There we go. 
Next thing I want to show you how to do is book pages and short strips. So I kind of like to get rid of the white bits and I'm going to chop this off as well. And that's just so that I only have the writing. Uh, it's, I haven't done this on all of them. Like for example, on this one, I was using the edge of the book page, this here, so you can see a little bit of writing inside. And I just realized over time that I prefer to have just the writing. Again, I didn't measure anything. This is probably about an inch and I don't even know how long that is, but it's quite short. It's like my hand. So you do your folding business the way you have learned how to do. Pleat, pleat, pleat. And then what happens? You only have enough for about half a flower. And I think you know where I'm going with this now. So you grab your next piece. First half, second half, and you put them together, just like so. And these ones are actually my favorite. So as you've noticed at this stage, I pierce a hole through all of them. And I'm just showing this because if you don't have an awl, you can use something like a thumbtack or needle or anything that you can, you know, get through those layers. The thicker the layers and the more you've got on there, uh, the harder it becomes to actually pierce that hole in the middle. So Another option would be just to staple it in the middle and then we can go about, well, I didn't really get that in the middle, but you get the point. And then we can go about hiding that staple. And it's probably easier to do it that way rather than trying to pierce a hole because it can get difficult if it's really quite thick. I'm going to try a really wide one with this and see what happens. Uh, and this is probably an inch and three quarters or four and a half centimeters. There we go. Okay, so I can already see because I have such a wide strip, I didn't really get even half a circle. So I assume I'm going to need three strips. I really have experimented with this, with this thing. So, and this is just the best way that I've found. All right, here we go. I have three pieces. I think it really looks good. So I'm just putting them together. I love it. Look at it. It's going to, I mean, you're going to see how it looks once it's done, but this is great. I just don't like this white bit here, but it's fine. I'll get over it. So this one was particularly hard to pierce through. Probably better to staple when it's really thick like that. I just wanted to show you, it seems like I only have one to show you. When I first started doing this, I would get, you can see this one here, right? I wouldn't get to form the full circle. And then that's how I decided, what if I put two together? I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this look. It's different when you're using the paper that's exactly the same, like I just did with this one here. So you can't, you can't tell that it's like three different pieces, right? Whereas with this one, you can. So that might be something that you actually prefer doing. I'm not sure. Perhaps you can do really wide strips and do three different ones like I did here, but use three different scrapbook papers, make a really big flower. I'm going to try that now. This is probably the largest one that I've made so far. And this is a newspaper. Newspaper is larger than 12 by 12, but it was really easy to just maneuver that into place and then do my folds and it still looks okay. I did go ahead and spray it with some sprays. I'm going to see what happens when I use really wide strips and I'm experimenting with paper I'm not particularly keen on so I don't mind I don't mind this one but this isn't very good quality scrapbook paper and the pattern is not my favorite so I don't mind if this is ruined so I want to get all of my strips the same size uh, same width all right let's see it's going to be difficult, I can already tell. I'm already struggling just to make that first fold. Oh, another, another thing as well. You can fold, it, it's whatever's easier for you. You can fold this way, which is what I've been doing so far. Or you can fold this way. So you can fold over and keep doing that way. Or you can fold from left to right. Right on left or left on right. Whatever's easier for you. I'm going to try this one the opposite way that I've been doing it so far. So I'm doing left on right. And you know what? I'm going to abandon this whole thing because it's just not, it's not happening. I can cut this down into strips 
regardless of the folds that are already in the paper and I can still make the flowers but the wide strip thing it's just not happening yet the little strips on the, on the other hand look how easy and done look at it so cute uh, it's gonna be cute when it's done which is what we'll do next and also another thing that I forgot to mention uh, that you can do is layer them one on top of the other and this is what you would do with this step anyway so you would have a larger flower for example underneath a smaller one and you get a layered effect this doesn't look very good because they're not done yet like just as an example you know layer the two on top of each other but there's a few different things that you can now go ahead and do to make this look really nice what i've done with some of them i'll see if i can show you a close-up is i sprayed them with some gold spray and some of them like these ones here i sprayed with the gold spray and then also some black spray so i just put a little bit of black acrylic paint into a spray bottle uh, with water and then i just went over the top and sprayed so i did a batch or two of these ones and then i thought oh, i'm not too keen on the sprayed effect i mean look how beautiful they look without any of the spraying so uh, spraying is an option but yeah, you can see, like, I mean, the string does add a little bit of something extra. But then I also like the really clean and simple look of this one here. So there's a few different ways that you can embellish your flowers and that you can uh, keep them shut, right? So the first way is I poke a hole right through the middle and then I add a little something else on top. So I just happen to have these two circles and I've actually done this on most of them because I really like that look. You can go ahead and you can cut out your own shapes. You don't have to have punches. I do, but you can do it by hand. And then I poke a hole right there in the middle. And then I add a bread. So I can get really creative with this depending on what type of breads I have. I do have quite a few breads because I absolutely love breads for so many different reasons. And you can get really cheap ones on Amazon and eBay and all that sort of stuff. This is a silver one. I'm going to use a silver one. Sometimes they're quite fiddly to get through the hole on the paper. And to be quite honest, the, the wider this hole is, then the, the easier this process is. Because we're going through several pieces of folded paper. And then sometimes this happens. This doesn't happen very often, but it just so happened today. And it's quite good, so I can demonstrate what I do. It's no big deal. I just turn my bread so that when I close it, it's keeping everything closed and in place. See? And here we go. I kind of didn't put that right through the dead center. Should have been moved more this way. But in my eyes, they don't have to be. I mean, they can't be. It's absolutely impossible to have these perfectly perfect. So when they're a little bit off center, if it's too much, then I might move it a little bit. But if it's something like this, I don't mind it. I accept it and I accept its imperfection. And as you can see in my box over here, I have most of them are actually done with the two circles and a bread. I just really kept it quite simple. Some of them have these little punched out flowers as well. So you can really play around. I mean, I just wanted to keep it really quite simple, but another thing you can do, I really love this one. Might as well show you this. I was using these paint swatches for my centers. It's really good because I've got all these different colors. So another thing that you can do for the center is a button. This here is actually a button. You can even do a punched out butterfly shape because it's really quite beautiful, the butterfly and the flower, and um, glue it down. You know, there's just so many different things. I'm going to show you how I apply the button. I'm pretty sure that it's quite, you know, self-explanatory, but just in case, let's go with this one. I'm going to staple it shut, very easy. And you know, I mean, just cover it with anything. You're just covering the stapler. So let's go with, I'm gonna use this handmade with love button. And I just pretty much, you can glue it on with hot glue. I'm not gonna use hot glue because the hot glue can seep through these holes and I want to avoid that. So here we go. I pop my button there. And then I kind of punched the holes already. See, you can see, so I can actually see. It, it just makes it easier for me when I'm sewing this button on. And now I just sew the button on, as simple as that. Probably would be simpler to just glue the thing down, but 
you know I can't really control absolutely everything like how perfect the flower is going to be but the things that I can control such as you know I don't like the look of hot glue seeping through those holes so then why not just sew it on and also when I do this I have these strands and I'm going to show you how I would use this in a project so you can see on this one here, I left the strands because I can use that. There we go. And then of course, you know, inking the edges a little bit, it gives it uh, a nice little finish, makes everything kind of stand up or stand out a little bit more. Depending on what look you're going for, you can go ahead and decorate it in other ways. You can add some black dots, you can do some doodling with some white pens possibilities are endless another nice thing on on this type of paper would be some water coloring oh that would look beautiful so these three are the button ones and i really like them but they do involve a little bit extra work let's just do one more i want to do this one that that's in three pieces oh you can make like little butterflies too okay let's stick with pleated paper flowers i'll just make it nice and simple for me and just staple the whole thing here we go. I wonder if I should make a layered one. Something like this. Perhaps it would be better if I can... Oh, I like this. Look at this. That looks very shabby chic, doesn't it? And then if I pop this one on top. The only issue with this type of thing is that it gets really, really wide. You know, and then you can't kind of have it inside the journal at all. Or you might need a really long brad which I actually do. These are for documents and, you know, like stack of documents to hold them together. So I could potentially use a really long brad to hold everything in place. Or I could simply just glue them together. And I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue them together. So you can make these look even more special by adding some flowers that you may already have in your stash, for example. I don't know. I mean, it looks quite beautiful. So why not? I'm going to do that. And here we go, they turned out really quite beautiful. And I'll show you closer so you can see. I've used hot glue on some of these and some I used the brad method with some uh, flowers that I had in my stash. And then, you know, this is, look how thick this is. So obviously there's those things to consider. And obviously the bulkier the flower on top, the less you can actually do with these in projects and speaking of projects i am now going to show you how you can actually apply these in your projects hopefully you have some of your own ideas turning in your mind already but here are some of mine in this project i've used it as part of my closure i created a mini journal basically what i did is i put two envelopes together like this just like that I've sewn in my signature over here, which is what you can see there. And when I fold it down, I have this. And I applied one of my flowers on the flap here. And I've used one with the bread. So I actually used that bread to put it through the flap over here. And then I wrapped some cord around, just some twine underneath, tied a knot. And that becomes part of the closure, just like that. A mini little journal. Next thing I did, I just applied it to some envelopes. You can see the bread here. I have a tutorial on making these wonky envelopes and look how beautiful that finishes it off. Same thing over here. This is another one of the wonky envelopes. I'll pop the tutorial in the description box below if you wanted to have a look. And then just here, this is a newspaper one that I did. And again, utilize that bread. This one here is another one that didn't complete the full circle and I just finished it off with a book page. So it looks quite nice on a project. They don't look fabulous on their own like this, but I think as part of a project, they do look quite beautiful. And then this one here, I just, I just love it so much. Next thing I did, I particularly love this one, is I put it on a paper clip. Look at this. I'm not sure if this is actually my favorite one. So this is again another one with the bread and I simply popped this paper clip through there so it's not actually going anywhere. So it's very easy to do. You simply just undo the feet like this, if that's the correct terminology, and then you close the feet or pop them back down. And there we go. It does move a little bit, but it's not, it can't actually go anywhere. And it's really, really cute. And it looks especially fabulous on a page like this. 
And then of course you can use that paper clip, you know, to hold something in like this on a page. Next thing that you can do, these ones that have the strings that, you know, with the, with the button, you can use it in something like this. When you're wrapping a little gift, you just tie that at the bottom and you have a beautiful little gift presentation. Or really, you can use those strings to tie it onto anything. Next thing I have over here is some tags. I simply applied it to a tag, just like that. Use the bread. If you don't like the look of the breads on the back of your projects, you can just glue them down. Use hot glue or even cover the breads. I mean, the breads really don't bother me. So there we have it. And I think it looks beautiful on a tag. Another thing you can do is just a square piece of paper and then you fold it diagonally like this. You pop this on there, you glue it down and then you find a page in your journal. So let's pretend that's glued down. And now I would put glue on the two sides over here, glue it to the corner of my page like this, and then you create a pocket here. And then also it can be opened up for some journaling space. I mean, really you can put it anywhere and it looks really cool. There can be tabs in a journal like that, you know, so they're sticking out. You can have a few layered throughout the journal. And then also the last thing that I did is I went into my art journal where I just come in and do all types of different things. And I created, where is it? Right here, a little art journal page, just like that. I drew something here that's supposed to resemble grass and these are the flowers. This page is not finished because I wanna do some writing up here. I think they look so beautiful next to each other like this on a page. It's quite bulky, of course, they're quite thick, but in this art journal, I'm going to do a tutorial eventually on how I created this from a catalog. They're very thick pages, so I can go ahead and write on this without any problems, even though this is quite thick underneath. And I mean, the possibilities are endless. So far I've explored tags, envelopes, corner flip ups, paper clips, journal cover, present wrapping, art journal page, and we've spoken about tabs. And there's just so many different ways that we can apply this beautiful craft. And the best thing is we're using up strips of paper, cutoffs from previous projects. It can be done in front of the TV. If you don't get the hang of it right away, then keep trying because once it clicks, it will, it will click. I hope this has made it easier for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.